All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, I need... Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, Jack Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ow. Doc, what would happen to the car? Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact! But where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler! I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. What are you talking about? A time machine? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal... Look out! Uh, Doc? Oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, wh what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuits. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's... Mass equals I times Z, and E equals a square. Doc, uh, something's way off here. Uh, Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! No! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Marty, is everything okay? 
Yeah, Mom, I, it was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now, back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. At least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley, way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Come on, I saw it first. Yeah, I guess you're right, but I picked it up first. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Dad. Problem? Biff? He's got this thing, see, and I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you... No, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. Yeah, he found it first, but... Oh, well then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? 
Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Let's make some noise. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. Oh, <laughs> gosh, <laughs> you're right, Mr. McFly. Here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. Now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Biff, I thought I told you not to take my son's guitar. Oh, right. Sure thing, Mr. McFly. I was just warming them up for you, Marty. Let's see what you got. Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. Dad. About Biff. Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle it. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, Doc, where are you? <laughs> 